Good morning, Jumbo, Ohio, Nyama. Guten Morgen, Comitelevo. How are you guys doing? Happy Non Farm Payrolls 157. Good morning, FX Street. Well, I'm not sure if the chat's working. Hang on. Oops. Hang on. I got to manually pull it up. I think this happened to us last time, right? It's My software's not pulling this particular chat. Hang on. I have the chat somewhere. Where is the chat? Where did you go, chat? It's probably still in my copy paste. Paste and go. There it is. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So I got you over there. So I have to manually look at chat. All right, so that happened last time. That's no big deal. Let me remind you that trading, not just Forex, but all, anything, trading anything is risky. and It's not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, however, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. But please, stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, let your winners run. Cut your losses short. Never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Okay? And treat your fellow Forex traders with respect and dignity. Thank you. Henley says, my first one was the 6th of May, 2006. Really? Yeah, it's, what is it, like uh, 13 years ago? Right? It's a while, right? So anyways, oh, I don't know my chart's going. Hang on. Hang on now. Hang on. Hello. Hang on. Where's my charts? Yeah, actually, the funny thing about this picture is I am I'm getting my first degree in like, well, I'll be done school in two weeks, I think, and then I pick up my degree in four weeks. Whip, whip. So that's good. So you got charts over there. Gee whiz, looking behind. Hang on. <laughs> I, I rebooted this. I forgot. Sorry, I was making coffee. Hang on, hang on. All right, that should do it. There we go. Hey, so you want to trade some Forex? Yeah, me too. I love trading. Top of the morning to you, baby doll. Thank you for all those wonderful comments you made on YouTube. Do my best. So, hey, by the way, my name is Wayne McDonald. I am the Chief FX Market Strategist for TradersWay.com. We're a boutique foreign exchange trading brokerage firm. I want to earn your loyalty and respect. And they want you to trade profitably and successfully for years and years and years and years. Uh, no, Mickey. Nope. Nope. Yeah, nope. Right? Hey, no. I've run uh, I've run at a loss for years and years and years and years. This is more than money, man. <clears throat> We're trying to change the world. So anyways, hey. I want to help you with technical analysis. I want to help you with fundamental analysis. I want to help you with trader psychology. I want to help you. Diamonds in the sky. Yeah. Hey. That's for Trader's Way, right? I haven't done that in a long time. Diamonds in the sky. Bloop, 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 bloop. So I got extra clone on for you today. My wife says too much. And I said, hey, man, I got to exude my enthusiasm across the, the whole world. Yes, I need to have a little bit of extra cologne. <laughs> Becky, you're looking at one right now. You guys are so funny. You guys are so funny. 
So let's get the heck lean past. Am I the world's greatest trader? No. Do I trade real money? Yes. Do I actually trade? I've traded so much where I've had my own dealing desk at the broke brokerage firm. The dealing desk had multiple employees. It had to have its own operating procedures and was specifically regulated by the NFA and the NFA officers went to the brokerage firm to review the procedures and policies. And the whole job of this dealing desk was to trick was to clear my trades. Okay, can we get past that now? Can can I like teach you how to trade? Can we focus on non-farm payrolls? Can we do our analysis? Can we identify support and resistance? Can I teach you what I know? Can we are we past this now? Uh, baby doll says, hey, what do you wear? All right, so in the clone thing. So funny story, I go with my my wife and my daughter and we go to the mall. And uh, I want some Tom Ford, uh, I think it's Odd Wood, O-U-D uh, Wood, right? So I go in there, and I'm like, how much is this? And he's like, it's $1,300. And I'm like, Does, do you like the smell? <laughs> they go crazy, right? So anyways, I got this huge bag. I am not joking. I have like 12 samples of every cologne they have at that store. <laughs> so like, I don't even know what I'm putting on now. It's like, my wife's like, oh, I don't like that one. So anyways, cool. So anyway, so good. We're past the heckling. Thank you very much. Namaste. I would like to have with everybody here, since we're all currency traders, we're all trying to improve. I hope we can have good karma and uh, share energy, share thoughts, share collaboration in a positive manner. Okay? And if you're if you're angry and bitter about someone because somebody cheated you out of something, just check the negativity at the door and just 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 give me give me a chance. Okay? I've been doing this. What this is my is this the 13th anniversary or 13.1? it's more than 13 years I've been doing this particular webinar, right? So I can't suck that much. Okay. We've got a thing here. Uh, FOMC statement indicated that the Fed is undergoing expansionary monetary policy because the kind is lower. But why is the dollar still strong? Very good questions. I can answer these things. I can do the math. Okay. Okay, I can do the math. Okay, so uh, we can do that. But here's what I propose, and then I'll pop up the charts, right? By the way, can you, uh, here's my charts. Would anybody like my chart templates, my chart indicators, my pivot points, and all these profiles? Each profile has multiple charts, multiple templates, multiple custom indicators, and all that kind of stuff. Would anybody like any of this? Would anyone like my entire MT4 chart setup so that your charts look exactly like mine? You have the exact same tools that I have. How much do you want to pay? Huh? $20, $50, $100? Tell you what. Let's just make a verbal agreement. Okay? Let's just do a verbal agreement. I'll give you them absolutely for free. If you just promise to go to tradersway.com and open up a demo account. Take you 30 seconds. You lock, When you're in the back office of your demo account, Download MT4, and then install my chart templates. Just compliments of the firm. You don't you don't even have to promise here, just emotionally. I'm asking you out, out, as being a decent human being, okay? Elijah says, I haven't established value yet. Where have you been for 13 years? I've established value, my friend. You're off. You're not on the clue train, but we'll get there. Doji, that's right. Doji wants to wash his own car, mow his own lawn, right? 
That's great. Go ahead. You can do it yourself. You're absolutely, you're absolutely right. So anyways, if you do want them for free, okay, it's charts.fxbootcamp.com. Right on, baby doll. Whatever. You got it. Yeah. So let's, Elijah, could just give me a chance. Just turn down the, uh, just turn down the attitude a little bit and let's work together. That's all I'm saying. So we got a three hour webinar today. Thank you to FX Street for hosting us. Thank you, FX Street. Okay. Do Doji's been doing his own trading, doing his own analysis. Perfect, Doji. Perfect. Seriously, honest. Uh, uh, congratulations. That's really good. That's all I'm trying to do. I want you to be an independent trader. I don't want you to listen to talking heads. I don't want you to follow someone's retarded strategy. Okay? I want it, right? I preach to teach. So anyways, but whatever. If you don't like it, just, just, right? We're good. So I'm going to prepare you for non-farm payrolls. We're going to do non-farm payrolls live as the number comes out. Okay? Okay. Cool. Hey, Doji, I'm only going to say it one more time. Either just like hang with us and enjoy the day and be positive or disappear. Yes, we all have the same charts. I agree. You can set up your own charts. I agree. I'm not telling you I'm the world's greatest trader. I'm not even going to put you into a trade. I'm going to teach you. But like, dude, if you got negativity, either check it at the door or disappear. Okay. All right. So. At at seven uh, sorry what is it seven three at eight thirty the news is going to come out so we're before then we need to do some technical analysis some fundamental analysis and then the news is going to come out there's going to be some volume and uh, volatility that's going to occur that right so we're going to look for potential scalps for that and we'll talk about the sort of what it all what it all means when the results come out right uh, yes Mickey says. Have I used a chart with only price action? Well, yes, but I can improve upon that a little bit, Mickey. Uh, this is th the simplest chart I could possibly trade with consistency. And I think you'll, you'll find that that's acceptable. Okay. Right on. Thank you, Doji. Thank you. Cool. See? All right, so what's my prediction? I'm not going to bore you with the prediction. We'll do our own analysis, and you can do it, right? Right on, Doge. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so what did I say? So the stock market's going to open at 930, more volume and volatility. And then at 10, we have ISM services, another doozy of an event, Right. So we have event risk at 10 as well, and then we're done. So we're going to have a busy day today. And in between there, I'm going to take questions from you. Technically, fundamentally, whatever, we can cover that, all right? Right? Okay? So that's the agenda. We're going to have to, like, have an event, deal with that. I'll take a couple of questions, and then there's another event. I'll take, you know, we'll deal with that. I have a couple more questions, all of that kind of stuff. But... The end of the day, to be a good participant, ask questions, get involved, treat everyone here with respect, subscribe to the uh, FX Street YouTube channel. If you're right, if you're not on FX Street, if you're on YouTube, subscribe there and like and comment and all that kind of stuff. And like I said, visit uh, Traders Way. An open account and, and have my chart templates for free. And thank you, moderator, for posting. Okay. Thank you very much for posting. We have the world's greatest moderator. I don't know if you know that. Good people. Good people. Which moving averages do you use? I'm going to cover that. Good, good point. Let's get on with it, right? Get on with it! All right, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hey, by the way, I wrote a paper yesterday because that's what I'm constantly doing. 
What am I going to do? Hang on. Uh, NFP, maybe. Do that. I, I wrote a paper yesterday how asymmetric information creates moral hazard. <laughs> Isn't it funny what you do when you're in school? I'm going to go to Starbucks. I'm going to hang out with uh, high school girls, <laughs> which is really strange. And I'm going to bang out a paper about asymmetric information. Okay. Yes, uh, I typically, Mickey, if you sign up at tradersway.com, every single day I do a free webinar with clients. And one of the things we do Monday mornings typically is cover commitment of traders report. So, yes, we did that on Monday. Is it recorded? I hope so. Yeah, I hope we don't see the chicken. Don't even say it. Don't even say it. You did open a demo cup. Right on. Congratulations. Nice. That's a little hot, though, uh, photo creativity. You're, you have a little too much risk. Um, if I looked at the beta, okay, the beta for the market wasn't that great. And 8% is pretty hot. And you don't, you're right. So your alpha is 8 minus the beta, which is pretty low. Um, so I'd be concerned. I believe you're over leveraged. So reduce your lot size a little bit and grow it closer to, like, really, since the beta was low, you should be growing at about 4%, okay? And if we were in a bigger booming month, you know, 8 to 10 is fine. But that would be a bit of a red flag. I'd have, you know, if I was considering investing with you, I'd have to do a risk-adjusted performance analysis, and I'd say, uh, you know, the 8% is good, but you to achieve it, you accepted risk. And you, you might do it with a $50,000 demo account, but you wouldn't do it with a $50 million live account. So therefore, you shouldn't be doing it. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? How accurate is the COT data? 100% accurate. The information comes from an exchange. It's 100%. Not 99.999, but 100.000000. Okay? It comes from an exchange. So let, ask, me, ask me about COT uh, after, okay? In between. I, I'm trying to get you guys ready for the big news event, okay? But I can break it down. If you want to know about COT, Commitment to Traders Report, it comes out today. I can school you. That's great. That's why I'm here. But let's, let's get ready for the big news scalp. And then sort of in between, let's say, 8 and 10, we'll squeeze COT in there and some other things. Okay? Does that sound like a plan? Cool, Lucas, right on. That's the way to do it, by the way. All right. So... Let's just skip ahead. Someone says, what are the uh, what are the EMAs? Take a screenshot, take a screenshot, take a screenshot, take a screenshot. Uh. Wayne, can you explain about your swing tree team? Yes, we meet every Friday. We set up trades for the next week. And we set up trades for the next month. So if you want to go for trades that are somewhere between 150 and 300 pips each, join the swing trading group. Being a U.S. citizen, so you're a U.S. citizen, game, gamer? Being a U.S. citizen and how well... Well, first of all, I, I haven't had a job... For for, forever, but let me tell you this: everyone around me is filthy, stinking rich. I mean, very average people are spending money like there's no tomorrow. Every restaurant is packed. Every store is packed. Uh, uh, like the other, I, I was at the BMW and Mercedes dealership. They're selling them as fast as they can get the cars on the lot. Mercedes and BMW, as 
fast as they can get the new cars on the lot, they're gone. I talked to one dude, I think he said 20 a day at the Mercedes dealership. 20 a day! Yeah, America, America's doing all right. Okay. How can you join? All right, you want to join the swing trading group? Look, all right, look, I didn't bring this up, but hang on. Where is... There's two things you can do. You can join the swing trading group. We're trying to find... Hang on. Uh, hang on. Why isn't it there? Oh, hang on. What is all this stuff? Hang on. There's uh, the webinar. There's the other thing. I thought I created something for you guys. Anyway, somebody wants to know how to join the swing trading room. Oh, God, gee whiz, come on. I thought I... All right, hang on. I guess you can see this, right? FXBootCamp.com. All right. So anyways, the swing trading group is a live trading group. On NFP days, we're going to meet on Monday. Okay? Or Sunday night, actually. So if you want to join the swing trading group now, you do this. And we start swing trading. Right? You, you click that, you buy it. Pretty simple. Okay? That's live. That's me working with you. Does that pop open? It pops open anyway. Okay? That's me working with you. There's also a video training course and all that kind of stuff to learn how to swing trade. Okay? But... Everything else is right here. Every video I've ever done, fundamentals, scalping, swinging, all this kind of stuff, it's all in here. Tell you what. Click that. And so it's, you see this? Watch this. You ready? NFP157. Fifty-five percent off, fifty-seven percent discount today only. You save nine hundred and twenty-two dollars. There's a nine hundred and twenty-two dollar discount today for the all bundles course. Every video on FX Bootcamp, fifty-seven percent off today only, if you type in NFP157. Show, I guess you'll see it right there. Uh, coupon, NFP157, save $922. It expires today. Okay? You guys ask me. Oh, it's getting hot in here. Anyways, let's go. I got to go. Okay? Got to go. Got to go. Let's go. So you took a screenshot here. All right. So we're going to do event-driven strategy, okay? It's an event-driven because we know exactly when non-farm payrolls is coming up. Okay? We know exactly it's coming out at 8.30. We don't know what it is, but we can get a good guess, and I'll bang out something really quick. I want to do something different today than we've typically done in the past. Okay? Hang on, I'm having problems with my air conditioning. Hang on. Yeah, a lot of problems with the office today. I have biometric locks on, all, on the door. And it wouldn't open today. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for peeing on my shoes, the blazer. Thank you. All right. Okay, so let's go through this. We have an event-driven strategy. We know at a particular time numbers are going to come out. The market's going to zippity-doo-dah, zippity yay. It's going to go up, down, down, and up, and up, and down. Okay?
Copy, go to fxbootcamp.com, do some research. Okay, so based on this, there's two there's two things. And by the way, I documented this at FX Street, so you can actually get this. But there's two things you can do. You can trade the vol, right? Trade the volatility, or you can counter trend. So for that, there's really two things we need to do, right? For that, we're going to need to do, like, use like a FIB study. No, there is not, Alex. That's the first time in probably two years I've done that in uh, in this NFP, right? Probably two, maybe three years. And it expires, so that's it. Like, So anyways, um, so let me show you. The volatility part has to do in here. Where, imagine this is a one-minute chart, and the numbers come out, and it goes up, 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 up for the th first three or four minutes, okay? What this tells us is the market's reaction is bullish, and to trade the volatility, what we want to do is, in this case, buy a dip. Or if it was down, you know, sell the retracement rally. So we're looking for retracements if you're trading a high-volatility event-driven strategy. Okay, so when we see this, we're looking for the red candle, but the green candles make us bullish, but we can't bull, we can't buy as a bull until we get some red candles. Okay. Okay, so what we're actually looking for is really a combination of things. One of the things I like to look for is a roll reversal. This re resistance can become support. And then the second thing that we're looking for is somewhere between the 382 and 618 Fibonacci retracement is an opportunity. Okay. And the general operating procedure that we're trying to achieve here is a down, 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 up, up. That essentially is the high volatility event driven strategy. Okay. Does that make sense? So in this case, what happened is, guess what? We didn't have a perfect market. So what actually happened? Okay. It went a little farther, but remember, when all of this began, when, it's, when it turned green here, oops, when it turned green there, we said we're a bull. It's not our opinion. It's not even fundamental analysis. Okay. You understand? It's not fundamental analysis, it's just uh, uh, high volatility that it took it north. So we have to have rules of engagement. It can possibly do this, okay? In that case, you will lose money. Or it'll do this, and in that case, you'll make money. Make sure this is a little bit, and this opportunity is more. That's all. And it's just a scalp, bro. Don't make a big deal out of it. But we have to have rules of engagement. So in the, if the initial response is green, green, green on a one minute chart, then you're like, okay, I guess I'm going to take this bull and I'm going to buy a dip. And like I showed you, this whole zero, uh, zone is what we prefer. So you longed it in there, let's say, and then you put a stop below the lowest low. And, you know, after that, Praying doesn't hurt. Okay? That's all it is. High volatility event-driven strategy. Okay? And when you get to this point, in my book I call this the line in the sand. Okay? When you get to the line in the sand, you should move this stop here to break even. So let's say it was here. And when you get to this point, you should be hero or zero, meaning if it breaks, you get paid. If it collapses, you lose nothing. That's the, what we're trying to do. So you're risking some, but not much, and then eventually you're risking none. But you have the opportunity. Because here's the interesting thing. Whatever held the market here may and, and has a very good chance of continuing to hold the market. For some reason, 
uh, either bulls got out or bears got in here, and it's very likely to happen again. All right, so you don't know if it's going to collapse or not, so you need to move the risk, right? Because it could, it's either going to do this or it's going to do this, and we just don't know. That's why when you get to like this 50-50, basically, like we nobody knows at that point, um, that you should move your stop to break even and remove the risk. Okay, and it's just a scalp, and then you move on.com. Now, here's the interesting thing because the fractal nature of the market. You're going to see this pattern on a one minute, and then you're going to see it again on a five minute. Okay, you see that? Elijah, are you going off again? Are you making this your webinar? Okay. All right. So that can happen. And by the way, uh, that, that's what it looks like. Boom. In this case, that example worked out. Okay. But there's also a counter trade that can be built into this. And so that's why we need uh, support resistance as well, right? So what should we look at? Where's the big resistance? If So start like an if then, right? If the market is up, then where's the resistance? Where's the big resistance? Um, well, we've already breached one big one. So technically, this one was important. We're already through it. So we're, we were at a monthly R1, but monthly R1 is not that important to me. So this is the big area for me if this goes up okay i think there's two things that are likely to happen today if we get a counter trend so i just want to make it clear we're now talking about a potential counter trend trade after non-farm payrolls okay ready so oops i want to do this red Okay, the first potential for a counter trend is going to be here, and that's where we look for something like this. Okay, and the first target is here, the second target's here, and the third target's there. Mostly, in that case, you're probably going to go for an R1S1, but it's not likely to happen today. Okay, now the second potential counter trend trade is up in here. So if we do this today, okay then you're looking at that. But that's less likely, right? This is too high, right? Okay. You see what I mean? Now, what about the other way? What if it drops today? Where's the bounce going to likely happen? Well, the first one looks like here, right? You see that? If I were to say bop, 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 that seems pretty reasonable. And like we already had on the other one, it's sort of like, even though this M2 is really nice, this is the bigger one, I think. Uh, it, just in case the market is actually playing, oops, that was supposed to be yellow. Uh, the market's playing um, a range like this, right? We call this an inside month. And there's potential for that. So like, there's in fact a lot of potential for that. So like today could go up and then down. Okay, that seems very likely in fact. 
Okay. So, uh, moderator, do you have a page on FX Street that has uh, every headline number for non-farm payrolls over the last year? Like the, the headline number every month? Where would it be? Analysis, maybe? So I want to know, uh, oh, maybe it's there, shifted price, change in price. Uh, I just want, I just want the numbers. Sell Mortimer, sell. Where is it? Uh, forecast poll. I don't want the forecast. I don't want the poll. Okay. I want the history. No, no, the stocks, no, 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 dollar news, no, 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 no. Maybe it's on the calendar. Oh, there it is. Oop. Okay, it's probably in here. Previous, no, positive, positive, I want the history, I want the headline, positive, 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 oh man, census and consensus and deviations, actual, okay, maybe it's in here. No, it's not there. All right, so we're going to have to go to the Bureau BLS, right? Bureau of Labor Statistics. And payrolls. Okay, employment situation. Where is it? So this is just, again, the headline. Uh, seasonally adjusted household data, establishment, freaking and the technical notes. Oh, man. Well, what I wanted to do was calculate a 12-month average and six-month average. Average, uh, average hourly earnings. I mean, that's going to be the big one, right? Employment for women, employment Hispanic. So this this is the two survey split, but I don't want that. I don't want to have to do two. I just want the I want the last twelve year uh, twelve months headline 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 headline. Nobody has a link to this. Oh, FX Street. All right, let me copy that. Thank you, Glenn. Let's see if that works. Okay, but I want the history. Oh, historic table. Okay, good. Thank you. Consensus, actual, uh, actual. Okay, cool. All right, that'll do. Thank you, Glenn.
Oh, I can export that. Get the heck out of here. What do you mean export it? Nice. Thank you, FX Street. That's nice. Cool. All right. So we need 12. So let's look at 12 and we'll kill everything else. We don't really care. Okay. It just goes on forever. All right. We don't want that. All right. So one of the things we can do, here's the actual headline number. So we can do this. We can do uh, 12, mo, uh, 12 mo av. Okay. Av. And we can do a six month av. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, first of all, you can sum all of this and get a number. Okay, and for a 12 month, you can go, uh, if you want to do it this way, you can do that. Oops, what did I do? That divided by 12. Okay. And now you can do this. X equals the sum of, and then you take the last six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you can get a, a total. And then you can divide that. Of course, I'm doing this a silly way, but anyways. Sum, you take that number and divide that by six, the last six releases. Okay, so one way you could do this is like, like hey, what's the, what's NFP gonna be today? A buck 80. Now, isn't that what's being reported? Is that funny? Like that's how much effort they put into it. Let's ask the experts, what do you think NFP will be? Uh, 180. Okay. Now, Challenger Chris Christmas uh, Gray. Challenger Christmas and Gray. Nice. Press releases. Here we go, yo. Forty thousand job cuts. U.S. based employment employers announced plans to cut forty thousand jobs from the payrolls in April. So let's do this. NFP is going to uh, equal the sum of the average minus 40. Equals the sum of the average minus 40. Okay, so check this out. Now we can do a third row here uh, let's say uh, expected headline, or let's just do expected. Now, how about this? What if we did equals the sum of these two things divided by two? So you need a thing over there. Oops. Buck 53. You want to do it that way? Thank you, the Blazer. Really appreciate that. So my guess would have been, honestly, I would have thought about 200. So we'll see how this model 
potentially works. All we're doing is taking a look at the averages and adjusting and stuff like that. Okay. So let's bring up Trade the News to get the numbers. Okay, so we'll get the numbers. Thank you, tradethenews.com. It's a little early, though, isn't it? What's the actual time? 8.19. All right, cool. So we got lots of time. Okay. Let's go to Euro dollar. What do you think? Yeah, Elijah, I thought so too. But, you know, I'm just doing a model. The biggest thing is most people don't do anything. One of the things I'm trying to show you is that we say, oh, the experts tell us it's 180,000. A lot of people say, well, how do they come up with that number? So I'm just showing you how they came up with the number. You're like, oh, it's a 12-month average, which is not going to be very accurate, don't you think? Okay. So how did I do here? So I did... Uh, uh, FOMC live, and this was the trade plan. Is that cool? All right, so I'm going to clear this out, reset this so it's clean. Okay. Where's the support? Where's the resistance? Well, you can see this top of the market started here. So I already have a target. Oops, clear. What, what's my target as a bear off of this line? If you don't know, you need to take the swing trading course. Okay. You don't know how to, to swing trade, you're in trouble, I think. Okay. So what's the monthly swing? What's the target? La, 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 the target ails. Just under 111? Yeah, isn't that nice? Beautiful, right? Beautiful. So the trade plan for bears is this. Now, a, a bull is going to try for the opposite. So I don't like this double bottom thing, but it is a thing. So if anyone does buy it here, so like the news comes out in such a way that it turns it bullish. It can happen. In that case, we're going to get caught here, and that's where it, it, that's the target. So this is a, a an up target, and this is a down target. Okay, uh, it was supposed to be red, anyways. Well, 
What do you guys want to look at after the news comes out? Dollar pairs, yen pairs, what's on your mind? Looks like there's some talk about Aussie yen. A descending wedge. About five minutes of the data, April non farm payrolls expected 190,000, prior was 196,000. Employment expected to remain at 3.8% for April. Average hourly earnings month on month expected 0.3%, year over year expected 3%. Hours expected to remain at 34.5%, just patient rate expected to remain at 63%. Factory payrolls expected at plus 10,000 versus minus 6,000 prior. Also get advanced goods trade balance at the bottom of the hour for March, expected minus $73 billion. Wholesale inventories for March preliminary expected 0.2%. Retail inventories expected 0.1%. Okay. That's what a, uh, a bull is thinking. Um, the problem with this thinking is we're not supposed to be below this price. So it's a little foobar. Um, but that's that. Now, here's the uh, thing. If you're a bear, what's interesting about this as being our top is it sets us up for a very large drop. So right now, we're on a double bottom, so you can't sell now. But if this does make a lower low, you can start selling rallies. and you're actually going down here. Your target's actually 1242. 1242. Okay? Okay, boom, boom. Okay? That's what it says. Remember, it's not my opinion, it's what it says. I'm looking at the chart. That's what the chart says. Where can you watch the news live? Uh, here. I'm using tradethenews.com as well. If you want to use that service, visit tradethenews.com. Yeah, I bought my first uh, Bitcoins, oh, two months ago. They were $3,800 each. I, I think I had three of them. And uh, then they went to like $5,500. I'm like, oh, this is easy. Well, it's too late to go. Hey, Jacked Up, it's too late to go into deep analysis about what I think about gold. I mean, we're right before the news event. Okay. But I can tell you. It was 10 year year holding right near the highs of the session. To the trade plan for the week. The average heading into so, jobs report. Again, the swing trading group and I meet every Friday. So Friday's plan was sell there and we were targeting this green area. So there's still a chance where it just does this and then pops up. And then probably next week, and that's what the swing trading group will have to meet to, data, to figure out what we're going to do next week, which is probably sell up here on a bounce down here. Prior but this is a clear sell, and this is a clear exit. Absolutely, zero, totally clear. 3% year over year. The hours expected to remain at 34.5. Participation expected to remain at 63% in April. Okay, guys. Also, advanced good trade balance due out from March. Expected minus $73 billion. Wholesale inventories in March expected 0.2%. Retail inventories expected 0.1%. Don't forget, guys, visit tradersway.com.
Open an account today, download MT4, and you can install all my chart templates for free. The download is at charts.fxbootcamp.com. Includes my weekly pivot points, daily pivot points, monthly pivot points, custom indicators, these moving average setups, uh, uh, two dozen profiles, a hundred charts, and it's completely free. Charts.fxbootcamp.com. report in just a few seconds. If you don't know what you're doing, don't trade. Tarm at 263,000, 263,000 above 263, pretty hot. Six percent unemployment down two tenths from from expectations. Prior non-farm revised a little over 189,000, 196,000. Early earnings at 0.2 percent, it's one tenth lower than expected. Back month revised up one tenth to 0.2 percent year over year. 3.2 percent is one tenth lower than expected. Weekly hours dropping one tenth to 34.4. Participation also dropping. Two tenths to sixty-two point eight percent. Trade balance at minus seventy-one point four billion dollars versus minus seventy-three billion expectation. Wholesale inventory zero point zero percent. It's two tenths lower than expected. Retail inventory is minus zero point three percent. It's four tenths lower than expected. Again, non-farm payrolls well above expectations at two hundred sixty-three thousand. And unemployment dropping at three point six percent. With hourly earnings a little lower than expected. We're seeing the dollar firm up on initially 111.42 in the euro. Interest rates continue to trend higher up to 357 in the U.S. 10 year. Get back month, non farm payrolls revised slightly lower, but the head April number is substantially beating estimates and a significant drop in the unemployment rate to 3.6% as the participation rate also fell to 62.8%. Unemployment rate of 3.6%, a five decade low. I'm just doing what I explained to you before the news came out. S&P futures after initially moving higher now coming under a little bit of pressure up six handles in the S&P has been moving lower in the wake of the employment data. So the, uh, the trade balance is a bit disappointing, but let's go through the, uh, the report here. Change in payrolls, pretty hot. Private payrolls, manufacturing. Uh, our er, so no inflation. Okay, no inflation, which says the Fed doesn't need to raise interest rates. Unemployment, 3.6, 50-year low, just amazing. But that also means the participation rate's probably falling, and you probably see that somewhere. All right, there's the 618. The birth that plug was quite large, 281,000, increased to 281,000. If you end up selling it, your stop's just above here. Remember, it's just a scalp. Negative jobs number. There's no inflation, though, so there's no reason for the Fed to raise interest rates, and obviously there's no reason to cut. I don't even know why they were thinking of it, right? Okay, so get ready for it. It's just a scalp.
So you can you can do it there. Move your stop here, and you should see how it goes. Okay, now you got to look for the next level of support, right? And that's why I did this. So zoomed in, come on. That's why I did this, right? So the, the first level. Is down low, right? Okay. So let's see what else is going on in the world. Let's move. Let's take a look at WTI. Okay, nice little day trade on WTI. So WTI has got a bottom. If you're going to ride it all the way out as a bull, your target's going to be up here by the end of the day. Bears are welcome to join the party basically now. Oops, what was that red? Come on, Bubba. There you go. This is basically the cell, not basically, this is the cell zone for bears. Okay. Now, if you're using moving averages, this breach of a 55 tells us we're probably going to reset off the 200 which then gives more confidence to a bull, which says, you know, poppycock, it ain't going to fall here. We're going to head up here. So and this M2 actually predicts this M4. So that gets us to 63.85, so 64. Okay. So that's a little day trade. But I think if you back out, there's still currently, uh, it's more down than up. So I wouldn't be, let's say, 100% certain. Let's put it here. Okay, so you still have to identify this up into here. This could be a problem. You see that that's perfect for bears. Okay, so if you're a bear, this is the first level. This is the second level. So bears have this all planned out already. Okay, that's what they're doing. Off the uh, uh, one hour, 55. Oops, I'm just going to click. Okay, one hour 55. Okay, and that gets us to the four hour 21. Okay, and that's just straight up for a bear. That's going to be irresistible. So you have to ask yourself if you're a bull or a bear. The charts are not going to tell you to be a bull or a bear per se, but that exists. That's real. Now, in the future, in the future, you will find that this lagging indicator, okay, it's not where we, it's not here now, okay, it's it's going to be here in the future, okay. Does that make sense? Okay, let's take a look at Gold's reaction, if any. Okay. Okay, seems like our support is held. Okay, makes sense, doesn't it? 
So ultimately the target for this, well, there's two targets. Today's target is back up into here. Next week's target, or let's just next, yeah, okay, next week's target, if you're a bull on, uh, on gold, it's going to be like this. The Blazers going big, trading and learning about lot sizes. Oh, welcome to Forex, my friend. Welcome to Forex. Big counter trend already. Now here, so let's kill all this. And let's try to figure out the bounce. I'm more interested in about why there. So let's take a look. Let's investigate a little bit more. What's the market thinking? Let me, so that should be weeklies and dailies, yeah. A little off the MR2, but that shouldn't be important on a Friday. Wasn't quite there either. So it's off of here and off of there. Eh. I mean, the one thing that this sets us up for is uh, Monday. So if this continues, I'm going to want to do something like this next week. Okay. Does that make sense? If you're a bear and you want to break it, it's a little tough after a basically a double bottom, but this is going to be your sell zone next week. So you could do one of these things. Uh, okay. So this is a classic counter trend trade. And remember, we identified this before as a buy zone and then one farther down as a buy zone. We just didn't quite get there. What I what I was expecting was, uh, let's get off a of four hour here. What I was expecting on a one minute, I suppose, or I expected one more hurrah. That's one way of looking at it. I expected sort of this and then the possibility of a reversal. So that's in that case, it's a little, I mean, we're, we're splitting hairs here, right? 11, 13, oh, anyways, it should have been. Yeah, we're just splitting hairs. I don't even see a psych level there. Cool. So, well, the next data is at 10, ISM services, which is another big one. That's a nice one. And then at 930, we have the stock market, right? Well, Innocent says, hey, I told you your USD was going up. Well, ultimately, nobody knows. Okay? So he, the secret sauce to trading is making a decision. So like you said, you believe it's going up. Great. Right? What you need to do is find the support, which is basically price. You have to say, at what price do you buy it? Okay? And I have this down here identified as support based on uh, basically a double bottom, right? So it is by definition support, and that's where you want to buy. So your your theory or your hypothesis is this goes up, and down here would be a good price for buying that if, if that's your, your plan. Well, we didn't quite get there, so maybe you had a different price, you had a different line in the sand, which is fine, okay? Now, what if you were bare? Okay. 
Well, we have a pivot point here. Oops, let's do it in red. We have a pivot point here and such. So you could be a bear, okay, and take it there. Because remember what I said is very often you'll see there's a move on a one-minute chart and a move again on a five-minute chart. So this could be the five-minute move where it, it came down, it, it came up, and then may head back down again. Does that make sense? Anyone got a question about that? It can still do this, this, and this, okay? I'm not saying it will. I'm not telling you to short it. If you already want to short it, there's a enough resistance in here based on pivots and moving averages and price action that if you just simply don't scalp the one minute, you, you only scalp the five minute, um, there may be an opportunity there, right? So now what you want to look for is price action that does maybe this, this, this. And if you see something like that, you have permission to take it down to that next level of support, right? COT, okay, I'm close to that. Let's just kind of wrap up some of this volatility, okay? But yeah. All right, so I have a request to co cover the commitment of traders report. Does anyone else have a request? Yeah, Anthony, I don't like trading news either. Yeah, I, pr I consider myself a trend trader and a swing trader. Yeah, I like swing trading because I it's like a schedule. So I know Sunday at 5 p.m. what I'm doing. Okay. I like that. And it's an okay time for me. And very often, though, I'll start my swings even on a Thursday or Friday. So I call that front running. Okay. Okay. And then I typically counter trend on a Tuesday. So that's what I like about swing trading. I know when to do it. I know how to do it. It doesn't take very long, uh, especially with a, a preset bias. I, I know exactly the price. Yeah. I, so combining fundamentals with swing trading is by far, by far my favorite way to trade. And by the way, like back when I when I first started, let me put this back because this was the trade plan. There it goes, guys. Um, back when I first started, non-farm payrolls would drop 300 pips and then rise 450 from that bottom and then probably drop another 250 back down. 
in one hour. So you new guys that come in and you want to scalp and so that you can buy yourself a yellow Lamborghini, skip, scalp, scalp, skip, 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 scalp. Um, you know, you're picking up a market that moves 18 pips and then, and then what moves plus eight back up the other way. And this is what it used to be down 350, up 450, down 250, all in an hour. That's more than you see in a month now. So um, good luck with the yellow Lamborghini thing. Uh, hope you do it. Uh, I, I bet against you every day, but whatever. Um, but as the market matured, my trading matured more and more to be a trend trader. And then that allowed me to do fundamental analysis, right? So like when I did my series three, the series three was interesting, uh, right? Because it said, if you're a, a grain elevator operator exposed to a fluctuation in grain prices, uh, how would you use uh, an option strategy to hedge against your risk? And it got me, you know, interested in, in, in sort of different points of view in the market where before I basically traded Forex, let's say really off of vol. I was a vol guy, really, if I think about it. Um, when I very, very first started, I traded overnight volatility. And then during the day, there was lots of scalping. And, uh, and then I would, and then there was some spot in there. Like basically I traded off of daily pivots, right? At the New York open or the London open. And as time grew by and I got smarter on fundies and I, I saw bigger picture things and the volume start, uh, volatility started to drop out of Forex because the market got mature and there's more players now. Um, well, then it, it, it afforded me, and maybe it's just age, the patience, right? So I, I was always pretty good at finding direction, but now I, I establish a bias. And then I use price action and pivot points to trade my bias. And I tend not to scalp at all anymore. I scalp into my entries, but it's not scalping. Okay. And so what does that mean? So if I've declared myself a, a, a bear on the euro dollar, this is what price action dictates. Okay, just, just price action. Down, 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 up, up, sell. Down, 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 up, up, sell. Down, 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 up, up, sell. Down, 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 up, up, and then all of a sudden, oh, that's going to take you out. Okay. And so now, actually, if you if you're a bias, if you have a bullish bias on this, here's what you can do now. Up, 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 down, down, buy. Up, 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 down, down, buy. Up, 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 down, down, buy. Okay. Now, why would I combine these two things together, guys? Price action and pivot points. I assume services is important. Okay. Because they're both leading indicators. They help me predict the future. Moving averages lagging, oscillators lagging. Okay. So what you should be thinking about now is Monday. Did you know that? Yeah, Jimbo, they call it socialism. It's not even a visual target. It's literally a, a, a crystal ball. <laughs> Tempe. That's fine. All right. I want to remind you, since you guys are asking to dive into some of this stuff, and I'm like, you know, there's a whole price action 
right? There's a whole price action training course at FX Bootcamp. That's part of this bundle. So I'm going to repeat it just one more time. Today only at FX Bootcamp, if you put in the all bundle package, all bundle, that's every video on FX Bootcamp, how to swing trade, how to use price action, how to use pivot points, fundamental analysis. If you didn't know what, what it meant when the Fed adjusted their IOER, if you're not a thousand percent clear on what that is and why they would do it and what impact it would have in the market, you need to take the swing uh, the uh, fundamentals course. So again, today only, fxbootcamp.com, put in the all bundles package, you will save $922.26 today only if you add in NFP 157. And you can ask anybody here, ask the moderator. That's the, uh, that's the first coupon code I've given at a non-farm payrolls event in probably two, maybe three years. I'm not here to give you a big sales pitch and stuff. That's it. Those resources are there. If you don't know how to trade price action, buy the all bundles course. If you don't know how to swing trade, buy the all bundles course. If you don't know fundamental analysis, buy the bundles course. If you don't know how to use moving averages, buy the all bundles course. If you like, that's it. FXBootCamp.com, the all bundles package, coupon code, NFP157. That's it. Okay. You need to know price action? There's a whole course on it. Okay. Yeah, I did notice that, Jimbo, but that's why the unemployment rate went up. Less people are in the in the pool. But yeah, thank you for pointing that out. But I did I did say it. No, it does not, David. No, it's just videos. It's the video training courses. If you're going to join the swing trading group, click the giant button on the top of the home page that says swing trading group. Why do I, why do I scream? I don't know. I guess I'm passionate. All right. So anyways, let's, let's take, let's move. Let's go, to, let's go look at something else. USD Swiss franc. Let's do this one. Okay. This one's interesting. If the dollar weakens and the Swissy strengthens we're going all the way down here does anybody think this is going to happen in may my pleasure david david i this just join the swing trading group that's fine no you don't download them it's all online you stream them all there's something like 30 hours or 40 hours of videos baby doll you're not going to download them. They're gigs and gigs each. Okay. Gigs, like 40 hours. I might be wrong. It might be 80 hours. I really don't know. Okay. It's going to take you like a year to get through. Okay. I got to know here. Well, this is a buy zone and you'll see it, right? So let's let's just identify resistance. This looks like some sort of resistance. I wanted that to be a different color, but let's do it. Okay. This is some sort of resistance. Okay. Does everybody agree with that? So here's my plan for next week then. If you don't think it's dropping here, then you're a bull. Then you actually want this to fall, bulls. All next week. And then it's gone. 
That's plan A. That's likely. Okay. Now, if it takes off without you and it goes like this, then this is your plan B. Okay. By the way, I don't know why. Again, my office is blowing hot air. Hang on. They'll be back. Yeah, I think my thermostat's broken. You know how hot this office gets with all these machines behind me? And then uh, my my office is soundproof. There's soundproofing in all the walls and ceiling. And so if you don't got fresh air and cold air coming in, oh, my God, it's like a microwave. Okay. So anyways, there's plan A and plan B. It comes down to your bias, guys. It comes down to your bias. Yeah, it's too bad, hey, Stephen, but that's how it is. Maybe we should <laughs> we should swing trade uh, NFB from now on. Who knows, huh? All right, so if you're now a bull and you're a buyer, let's say next week your buy zone's in here. Uh, that's why I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. But anyways, and the other one's down here. It's hard to see, isn't it? Let's change this to a different color. Okay. There you go. Okay. This is, I think, the real buy zone. This is a little bit one for next week. So your, your trade plan for Monday, guys, is like this if you're a bull. And the bigger trade may have already happened, but you might get another opportunity. But that's the bigger move, right? Okay, cool. So let's clear that out. So if you're a bull on that... then your target is way up here. I mean, way up here. You're looking at 104 and a quarter. Okay. Up, 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 down, down, buy. Up, 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 take profit, get out. Get out? And because of this entry, this is the exit, the top one. Okay. Yeah, Mike, what's the other reason? How much money does it take you to buy one, uh, one mini lot? hundred bucks, right? Right? That gets you one mini lot, which controls $10,000. So what happens is you go to the Swiss National Bank and borrow ten thousand using a hundred dollars of collateral. They pay you to do it, and then you take your Swiss francs, you make an investment into the U.S. dollar, and they pay you to do it. This is a double dip. Okay, double dip. You get paid to borrow and you get paid to invest. How much do you say? Wayne, how much? Well, let's see. Uh, I got to do it this way. Uh, and I'm going to go. Uh, and we're 
talking about USD Swiss franc. Okay, how much? 3.33. Okay, so you're going to earn on your, okay, you have $100 invested. You're going to earn 3.36% a year. Okay. Does that sound like a lot? How many people would be happy earning 3.36 on a liquid government issued treasury? It's actually pretty good, right? It's actually great. That's a one year. If you want to do that in the United States, guaranteed by the U.S. government, you need to invest for 30 years. This is per year. Plus, you only get paid twice a year. In this case, you get paid every day. But let me blow your mind. You don't have a $100 investment. You use that as collateral for a $10,000 investment. You borrowed $10,000 from the Swiss National Bank and put $10,000 into the U.S. of A. You earned 3.36 on the $10,000, which is $336 a year in interest on a $100 investment of cash. Holy smokes. Why am I yelling? If you bought the USD Swiss franc and held it for a year, just in interest payments, just in interest payments, you're making 338% a year in interest. I'm not even calculating pips. Pips would be way, 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 way more. But if you were to buy this, move your stop to break, you've been walk away for a year, and on 365 days later, you got knocked out, knocked out of break even, you would cry and say, I only made 338%. All right, I'm going to turn down the mic. I'm going to turn down the mic. No one's complained about me yelling before. So the mic must be hot or something. Okay. So that's what you should be on the long run. That's something that you should account for. Okay. Longer periods of time. My favorite chart is probably the four hour, but I enter all my trades probably on a five minute chart. But I, I don't know what to do on the five minute if I haven't analyzed the four hour. And I start by the month. I say, where are we going? Okay. I say, where are we going? I have to have a roadmap. Do you know where you're going? Do you have goals written down for your life? Or are you just walking through space and absorbing oxygen? And even worse, pumping out carbon dioxide. Are you simply input, you eat food, you poop, you breathe air, and then one day you'll die? Or do you have a, a mission in life? And then what is your mission in trading? What is it you do? You're a market participant. What is your role? How do you benefit the market? Um, I show up every day and I just wing it. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to do lots of it. And I'm going to earn a yellow Lamborghini doing it. Okay. What is your role? Are you a bear? If you're a bear, 
you're a seller and you're a seller at that price. Are you a bull? Then you're a buyer at this price. If you don't know if you're a bull or a bear, you've already lost money. Why drag it out? Step a little closer to the edge. And I'm about to break. Yeah. If you don't know if you're a bull or a bear, you've already lost. You're a pig and pigs get slaughtered. Okay? You feeling my you feeling me, bro? I'm not hurting your feelings, right? If you're a bear, you know exactly what you do. If you if you don't know what to do, then you need to take the offer I gave you today, take the courses. Okay? This is clearly a place to sell if you're a bear. Slap in the face, kick in the shin. Punch in the gut. You, if you don't see it, you don't know. You don't know the matrix. Okay, you're chasing the yellow Lamborghini, you, right? The woman in the red dress, but you don't see reality. You see an illusion. Yes. Oh, thank you for the CO2. Okay. That is clearly a setup, but probably not today, but you could do it today. Oh my God, look at that. Look, I'm telling you, if you're a bear, you need to know what's going on, bro. If you're a bear, okay, you need to start, oops, this is supposed to be black. You need to get on this, dude, get on this, get on this. Find a reversal pattern on a smaller time frame. It might not be today. You might want to sell a rally tomorrow. If you're a bear, you got to get in on this. What's your plan? Get a game plan going. Don't just drop a lot. Show me the analysis. Show me the trade setup. Okay? This is Monday sell. So between now and Monday, you got to get on that. Show me a plan. Okay? And what if you're a bull? Well, I think it's actually going to come down before it goes up, but whatever. I don't know any more than you. But I know on Monday morning, if I'm a bull, I'm buying there or I'm buying there. Oh, my gourd. Oh, my gourd. That is so fecty. That's so fecty. It's right there, man. If you don't know, you got no flow. You got to know. Right? No, I don't think ISM is going to be huge, but it's important. Okay? Look at look at the up off of our support, guys. Look at that. Now get ready, bears, 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 bears. If you're a bear on gold, uh, this gets interesting in here. This gets interesting. If if you're a bear on gold, I'm not telling you to be a bear. I would never belittle you by telling you what to do. You're a big boy. You're right. You're a lady boss. <laughs> Jim, <laughs> Jim's right. <laughs> yeah, three grand, Lloyd, three grand. Lloyd, here, and then I, I want to do, right? By the way, moderator, does, does FX Street have COT data? Do we have commitment to traders report data on FX Street, guys? Uh, 
But anyways, the point I want to make with uh, when you're earning interest, 338% return on investment on your cash is pretty good, right? But the pips are worth way more because what's happening is you're earning approximately one pip a day. You just overlook long-term trades. So you just, you're like one pip a day is nothing. I'm only making a dollar a day on my, right? I'm only making a dollar a day on my hundred, my hundred dollar investment. And so you don't even care. You're like, right? You just throw that away in the bathwater, so to speak. Oh, it's only a dollar. But after three or after a year, it's $365 and you only made a hundred investment. All right. Thank you, moder moderator. Okay. So here's the real thing, guys. I don't think you're going to buy it, hold it for a year and break even on the last day. I think instead you're going to earn 333% on interest and 1,338% in pips plus 338 in interest payments. But what I'm suggesting is so many traders are so short term that they don't even consider how amazing Forex is. How much... Okay, if you bought $10 million in real estate, how much are you likely to earn per year? What is your net operating income? What is your net operating income on a $10 million real estate? On a $10 million real estate deal? What's your guess? Just make up a number percentage wise, your NOI in terms of percentage. $10 million, which is not a big deal. That's a small apartment building. But what's your NOI in terms of percent annually? If you got an 8% NOI, that's huge. You're not going to get that in New York City. It's too competitive. You're probably out in like oh, uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. Now, let me ask you something. How much money did you pony up for the 10 million? Did you pony up 10 million? You say, no, I only ponied up 2 million. So where did the other $8 million come from? The bank. Okay, how much are you paying the bank now? 5%. So NOI minus financing costs or your carrying cost, you're only bringing home 3% a year. And it cost you $2 million. But on your $2 million, that's pretty good. Now it's back closer to 6%, right? Cool. So how would you like to instead make 2,000% a year? Oh, like, <laughs> and you don't have tenants, and you don't have to mow the lawn, and a, a tornado doesn't rip the, the thing up, right? And you don't get tenants, you know, growing weird things in their bathroom and burning the place down. Cleveland's awesome, Stingray. But look, Stingray, right? Your comp, the comp rates in Ohio, in, in Cleveland, Ohio, are going to be a lot higher than in New York City. Right? So what I'm saying is you can decide that you want to be a multi-million dollar real estate developer or owner, or you want a portfolio of $1 billion in real estate. Okay, and you're going to make, after financing costs, 3% a year. Okay, how many people believe right now they can walk into a bank, even if you start small, 
walk into a bank and start the process of building a $1 billion real estate portfolio. You only need 200 million in cash, plus stellar credit and unbelievable experience and connection. Okay? Well, okay, maybe you don't have 200 million. So, well, 20 million, well, you don't have 20 million. 2 million, well, you don't have 2 million. Do you have 200,000? Do you have 20,000? All of a sudden you're like, dude, this is going to be a long haul. Yeah, but you know what? That's the right way to do it. This is a long haul. Forex is a long haul. This is not a get rich quick scheme. This is a career. But what I'm saying is you can walk in. Nobody cares what you do for a job. Nobody cares if you went to Harvard or didn't even go finish high school. You need a laptop, an internet connection, and a credit card with $100 available. And believe it or not, someone will give you $10,000. Or if you have $1,000, someone will give you, right, $100,000. Look, if you got ten grand, a lousy, stinky, no good ten grand. Ten grand is nothing. Oh my God, ten thousand is nothing. And you can develop a million dollar foreign exchange portfolio with a ten thousand dollar investment. Dude, find me a better deal. And you're like, oh, but I'm in Europe. I'm in Europe. I only get thirty to one. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, life sucks. By the way, you can move out of. You can move out of socialism if you want, but here's the thing. Now you only control a 300,000 euro portfolio. Yeah, that's tough. That's really tough. But look, if you, if you don't have much money, that's a lot of opportunity. Do you understand? Like this is so amazing, but so many people are trying to scalp and make 25 pips and say, I made $250 today. Well, good, you know what? Go ahead, buy your yellow Lamborghini. You can lease it, by the way. It's only gonna cost you 1,500 bucks a month. What's the big deal? Why would you want that? You can get a Lamborghini if that makes you happy, right? And by the way, you think it's gonna get you girls, right? This is what young men wanna do. They don't have any money. They didn't, they didn't study in school, but somehow they're gonna be smart enough to be a hedge fund manager. And they're going to earn a bajillion dollars, drive a yellow Lamborghini, and get hot girls to notice them. The thing is, the girls don't care about your car, bro. You don't even understand women. So you got to turn this into like a real career. Women are smarter, by the way. Women are probably better traders. There's just not enough women trading. But they're, they're usually smarter. They're more risk averse. They focus on the long term. They're not interested in the, the excitement and the action and the get rich quick. They're right. Women are way more responsible. And by the way, they did better in college. They actually read. They actually read. So you watch. I think the ladies in our chat can probably hop, skip and jump around most of the men because they're focused. Okay, there's a huge business opportunity that pays you ridiculous amounts of money if you have a long-term point of view. Okay. Okay. Doug says, what do you, happens if you have $2,000 on the trade? I I'm not sure what you're saying. I must have missed the first part, but... Look, yeah, if you're stupid and if you over leverage, you don't have the long term. Because here, the name of the game is to stay alive as long as possible. Okay, you get that? And do a small trade, and then do another small trade, and do another small trade, and another small trade, and another small trade. And if some of them fail, it doesn't matter. Do another small trade, do another small trade, do another small trade, do another small trade, and build up, and build up, and build up. And then move your stops and lock in some small profits. And if the market does come back against you, well, you pick up, right? 
So like, for example, let's say you're in a trade and you're up a thousand pips. Okay. Lock in 365 pips and then forget about it. I swear to you, forget about it. Be in the trade for five years. How long do you want to earn a guaranteed 336% per year? How long? A day or a decade? You see my point? And now imagine that trade is up 6,000 pips because you've been in it for four years. And what if along the way the Fed raises interest rates? Okay, let me do another comparison. You buy a 30-year bond and it pays 336, 336 per year. Okay? And then the Fed, two years from now, raises interest rates to 3%, from basically two, two and a quarter to 3%. That's pretty reasonable over the next two years, right? Do you get a pay raise here? Because that's the Fed funds rate. So that means this should go to about four and a half on the, on the 30 year. Do you get a raise from 3.36 to the 4.5? And if not, what actually happens? Well, the answer is no, you do not get the four and a half. Now, the 30 year rate goes up to 4.5, but you hold a bond, a piece of paper that says you will for 30 years earn 3.36% on the money you ponied up. No more, no less. But that means if people can now go to the market two years from now and pick up a bond, a 30-year bond, just like yours, same piece, different piece of paper, everything else is the same. This is for 30 years. This other person's going to earn 4.5, and you're only earning 3.36. Guess what? The value, the valuation of your paper drops. It's like owning a house for 30 years, okay? But then the real estate market falls. Your house is actually worth less. Same house, same windows, same landscaping. But someone comes up to you and says, yeah, it's worth less. You're like, what do you mean worth less? It's exactly the same. Feels the same. Looks the same. What's changed? Oh, the piece of paper that says this is your house is now worth less. You cannot sell it for what you used to sell it for the value of your bond falls because why would someone buy your stupid bond for 3.36 when they can buy a brand new one for that pays you 4.5? So now the value drops. Plus, it's 3.36, not 336. In Forex, in contrast, if the Fed raises interest rates, you make more money. You get a raise because you were so smart and so tenacious and you stuck with it. And then the Fed raises interest rates again. You get another raise. Fed raises interest rates again. You get another raise, boy. You're like 336. Now I'm more, more like 400% a year. Boom. Love it. Love it. Someone in the bond market would lose money. Someone in the Forex money, in the Forex market, gets a raise. And when? They get paid every single day, every single day, every single day. See what I mean? My education? In three weeks, I'm picking up um, a degree in macroeconomics from Harvard. I have my uh, gold. I have a gold ring. I'm picking it up. Gold ring. Macroeconomics, Harvard University. And then next year, I'm picking up my degree in, in financial management. It's actually management of finance. Yes, by the way, it cost me lots of money. It took an insane amount of hard work, and I had to sign up for four, a four-year program. 
And I don't think because I have two degrees from Harvard that I'm going to instantly get rich. No, it took four years of ridiculous, sickening work ethic. By the way, I'm set to graduate on the, in the, on the dean's list of academic excellence. And there's no instant quick reward. It's kind of like learning how to trade Forex. You're going to have to work your butt off day and night, night and day, day and night. And there's no quick return, no easy money. It's just like going to grad school at Harvard. It's going to cost you a lot. It's going to suck up all your time. You're going to have to make sacrifice after sacrifice after sacrifice after sacrifice. After sacrifice. It's never ending. It's relentless. It's almost torture. And when my four years is done, I'm at zero. It's not like there's a big pot of money at the end. Congratulations, you graduated from Harvard. Woo, there's a million dollars. Okay? And by the way, I'm 45. I have kids. I am married. And I do more than 4X on top of going to school. You, you're going to need to compete. If you don't have a life like that, you're not reaching your potential. And my guess is if you're not reaching your potential, I bet you you're not happy. I bet you you're borderline depressive. Why? Because you don't have enough money? No, don't worry about that. The most depressing thing in your life is you know you're better than what you're doing. Okay. I think this is probably a worm inside your brain. It's bothering you. And you come to Forex now because maybe they're like, dude, you're too young. Dude, you're too old. You're the wrong color. You're the wrong creed. You're the wrong religion. You're not tall enough. You got the wrong eye color. You're not smart enough. You didn't go to the right school. Your dad was an idiot. All these things holding you back, and you're better than that. Nobody gives you a chance. You're like, dude, I could manage a $200 million real estate portfolio. I know you could, but no one's going to give you the money. Why? For all those other reasons. What school did you go to? I didn't finish college. Forget it. How much money do you have put down? I don't have any money. Forget it. Oh, what neighborhood do you live in? I'm sorry, we can't do business with you. If any of these problems are in your way, it's bothering you. And now you're staring at Forex and you're probably chasing the wrong dream. I want to make sure you don't screw it up. None of those problems are a problem for you anymore. You found Forex. Now treat it like a business, not like an illusion. This is not a child's game. This is the game of king and queens. This is a game of thrones. Right? you got to be a warrior that dominates, or you're either a street sweeper or a jester. Look at me. I want to drive a yellow Lamborghini. I was going to grab a watch. I don't have my Rolex on today. Oh. I want a Panerai, I want a Panerai, and then people will love me, and then I'll be a success. No, dude, you're not even thinking big enough. Okay? Actually, a Stanford degree would be fantastic, Lee. Nothing like a second best school. <laughs> right? Hey, I, I can imagine if I went to Stanford, I can tell all my friends, I went to the second best school in the world. Okay, so anyways, but think about these hedge fund managers and Goldman Sachs traders. They do have college degrees from Ivy League schools. They did come from the right neighborhood. Their dad was somebody important. And you're going to dominate them and destroy them. I want you to harness all the stuff that's been holding you back your whole entire life. I want you to feel liberated by like, when are you going to get a better opportunity? There is no better opportunity. I was a venture capitalist. I looked at 
more than 10,000 business plans. And I decided to throw myself into Forex full time forever. So I just want to make sure you understand how important this is. And you're going for 20 pips today, 50 pips today. That's not the game. You're not even recognizing the game. I want you to look longer term. I want you to be more focused on the benefits of Forex. Okay. It pays you, the USD Swiss franc alone pays you 336% a year. Better than bonds, better than real estate, better than the stock market, better than everything else. And you're not even trying to capture it. You're not even aware of it. So we got to change these things. Right? Stock market's open. Ding, 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 ding. Okay? Okay? Just trying to get your head screwed on straight. This is the greatest opportunity in the entire world. Yeah, you'll make money and stuff. It's the greatest opportunity in the world for you to fulfill your destiny. Your depression isn't your money. Depre money creates depressions for economies. You're not an economy. Do you know rich people with depression? Hell yeah. Why does a movie star get depressed? Why does a rock star get depressed? Right? Why do filthy, stinking rich people get depressed? Because they're not fulfilling their destiny. They are failing. They know they can do better. You're like, look at these guys. There's success. But they're shooting higher. They're working hard. Hey, Michael Jordan, you made it to the playoffs 20 years in a row. Why, why such the long, gloomy face? Because I wanted to win the championship. Okay. So what are you doing? What's your game? Do you have goals? Do you write them down? Do you have a focus? What is your bias? Like, I bet you a lot of people here, I'll say, okay, what do you want to do on Monday? And you're like, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see on Monday. We'll figure it out Monday. You've already lost. You have no plan. You have no plan. I'm going to beat you. I will dominate you. If you don't have a plan, put me in the ring. Let's go. Because, you know, when you when you trade, it's one-on-one, mano-a-mano, right? Right? Am I right? So every time you step into a trade, you better be better prepared. You've done more analysis. You know what you're doing. You've identified your prices. You're looking for reversal patterns at those prices. And you're going to dominate and destroy. Okay. Yeah, some people are heckling me. They, they think this speech sucks. Yeah, well, you do a three-hour webinar. Right? Hey, what did uh what did uh, NFB do today? It went uh uh, uh 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 Okay, good. But I'll tell you what, if you can turn the heckling off, I can change your life. I can make you a better trader, and then if you take those rules which I teach you, you'll probably become a better person. But you probably can't turn your other voices off. That's probably the, the situation. But then again, you must be super happy, super fulfilled. And then, then I'm happy for you. Okay. Did I open anybody's eyes 
How many people can feel me on that? Well, the problem is FX Street doesn't have COT data, so I'll talk about it, but there's not a lot I can do, but I'll talk about it. But just let me know. How many people did I reach in the last even just half hour? One, Tammy. I'm telling you, once you get your head screwed on straight, Forex is going to get a lot easier. It's going to get a lot easier. Not that Forex is easy, but you're, you're going to simplify your trading beyond belief at this point. Okay? You understand? This is better than any job. This is better than any re, uh, uh, investment opportunity. I don't think you're going to be able to have a billion dollar portfolio of real estate paying you income. I think it's going to be more likely, okay? It's gonna be more likely that you can control a billion dollars in the Forex market. And if that sounds like too much, right? I've traded over a billion dollars in volume, absolutely. Absolutely. You're going to be doing hundreds of millions of dollars per month. I know you can do that. I know, I know if you just simply become a great trader, not an amazing trader, not the world's best trader, just a competent trader, and you start to trade other people's money because you probably don't have a lot now, you will trade hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars every month. That I know absolutely you will do, but not if you don't have it here in your brain, not if you don't have it here in your heart. If you're chasing illusions, then you're going to stay a child forever. But don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. That's okay. You'll ask other people for money. You'll take a job and you'll say, please, boss man, please, I would like to take two days off vacation. Would you, would you please? Oh, I have to fill out a form. I have to tell you six months in advance. Mr. Boss man, can I please have two days off of work? Pretty please. Rather die. Okay. Let's take a look at some yens. Oh, no, COT. Let's do some COT, brother. All right, so let's go blanky, blanky, blank. No, uh, let's do here. Let's go up. Let's go up. Let's do blanky, blank. S commitment to traders report. Lots of people ask for this. Okay. Commitment of Traders Report, otherwise known as COT. I don't want to write it out because they're big words. Commitment of Traders Report. This is done by the CFTC. I don't want to write that up. Commodity Futures Trading Commission, a.k.a. the U.S. government. Yes, Mark, I already showed you. Please, Mr. Bath. Yeah. You know, the other one, Mike, Michael, yeah, can I go to the bathroom now, Mr. Bossman? How about like, there's always someone named Kathy at 3.30 in the afternoon burns popcorn in the microwave and stinks up the entire office. 
right? I calculate my neighbors still go to work, right? Most of my friends, by the way, most of my guy friends, like they don't have jobs. They never leave the house except to golf like four times a week. I, I literally have like four friends in my neighborhood, guys, prime working age. They don't have jobs. <laughs> it's great. But my neighbors have jobs. And uh, both the man and the woman work and they each have their own cars. And because of that, they have three kids. So they have to pay for a nanny to raise their three boys, like a little kid, a medium kid and a larger kid. Right. So she's there. She's there like 12 hours a day, the nanny. So they got to pay for her. They each have their own car. So let's say they lease their cars. I don't know, 600 bucks a month each. Is that ISO? No. Uh, right. And then they got to insure it and gas them and maintain them. And they each drive about an hour with traffic. It's an hour each way. So two hours a day times two people, four hours a day, 20 hours a week, 80 hours a month, a thousand hours a year. Mommy and daddy simply drive to work and they have to pay for gas, pay for oil, pay for maintenance, pay for the lease, pay for the insurance. And then because they're never home, pay for the nanny. Like, oh my God. And then they get paid once they get to work to like, who do they work for? The leasing company? The insurance company? The nanny. The nanny's the boss. The nanny is raising their three children. I'd rather die. Forex is the most important thing in your life, guys. Forex is the most important important thing in your life because it will change the lives of people around you. Anyways, Commitment of Traders Report. Okay. It comes out every Friday. And this goes back, I think, around World War II, there was a, there was a problem. They didn't know, right? They didn't know how much wheat was planted, how much corn was planted. They didn't know some basic things. But it was for the war effort that they had to say, well, we need, we need to be able to plan for food for the troops and all this kind of stuff, right? So they started gathering information, right? Right? They start gathering information, they start surveying and stuff. So the government releases reports, right? Like the, the, the crop report. Remember uh, trading places? The, uh, the crop, uh, crop report on frozen concentrated orange juice? Well, there's that's one way, but there's also an exchange. If you remember that movie, you had all the people in the trading pit and it was going crazy, right? These are people, by the way. Buy, sell, sell, buy, 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 sell. They're, and, and it's crazy, right? It was the Dukes. It was the Dukes. That's called an exchange. And this is the floor, the trading floor on the exchange. The exchange connects sellers with buyers. Okay. Therefore, when something is sold and the ownership transfers buyer to seller, that is tracked. So at the, end, at the end of the day, even through that chaos, everybody knew what happened, how many contracts were sold, right? So that's an exchange. So the Commitment of Traders report is released every Friday by the, commitment of, uh, by the Commodities Futures Trading Commission, Friday at 3 p.m., I think it is. And... It goes back to Tuesday's numbers. So on Monday, large institutional investors, right, report. So we can figure out a lot. First of all, we have information from the exchange. What can the exchange tell us? Total volume of trading, right? And it's number of contracts. They could say 1 million contracts were exchanged. 
And we know that for a fact. Okay? You know that for a fact. One million contracts changed hands. All right, cool. So we know that. Second thing is, they say, well, we need people to volunteer their information. Well, I guess we can't do that, so we're going to have to pass a law. If you're going to be licensed and registered, and, you, and you're a large trader, okay, a large institutional in, trader or investor, we need these guys to tell us how much they've been trading. So it gets reported by these guys, and I believe it's Mondays, at the beginning of the new week, they have to report how many, right? how many contracts they traded. But then they're like, well, wait. That's not enough information. We need to find out how many people are trying to make money and how many people are hedging. Neutral. Hmm. Because we know lots and lots and lots, if not most players in the market, are using futures contracts to hedge a cash position. That's why it's created. So if you're, it, it, right, if you sell bread, you need to buy wheat. If you make bread to sell, you need to buy wheat, and you're vulnerable to wheat prices. So you're going to lock, if you're worried about prices going up, you're exposed to cash, meaning you're going to have to pay more in the future. That's not good. So you can buy a futures contract that says if prices go up, you're going to have to pay more, but you're making money in the futures market to offset your losses. You're hedged. So we're like, okay, lots of people, if not most participants, are in the market simply to hedge. And we need to know that because they're not being speculative, which is a whole different kick in the boodle. So they're like, you know what? Let's do it this way. Those that are market participants simply to hedge, the government says, you know what? We're not going to tax them. Because they're not trying to make money. They're trying to not lose money. And in fact, if prices go down, they're locked in at the higher price. But now they can buy it for lower. So it offsets and it stabilizes prices. And that's good. So the U.S. government says, hey, look, we'll, we'll make a deal with you. If you're a bona fide hedger and you're in the marketplace, we're not going to tax you. So you're going to have to file and tell us that you're a bona fide Hedger. If you don't file, then we know you're a speculator. So now they know large institutional players that are hedgers. And they know the large speculators. And they are reporting. So now we know total volume, right, minus speculators, minus hedgers. And there's still a number. Who's who's left? Dumb money. Okay. We know the total volume minus large institutional speculators minus large institutional hedgers, and whatever's left over, dumb money. That that's us, by the way. Retail scum. And that's how they treat us, by the way. We're retail scum. But whatever, that's why we band together, right? So now the COT tells us, okay, total volume, total speculative, speculative volume, hedging volume, and whatever's left over, we can calculate through basic math where, where the dumb money is. Well, we don't really care about these guys because they're, they're not trying to make money. They're trying to not lose money. So now it's dumb money versus what? Large institutional speculators, smart money. Harvard College versus Cambridge Community College. Okay. Smart money versus dumb money. And now we can break it out 
the COT also can tell because now they look at the, the actual contracts and they say how much are long, how much are short. How much are long, how much are short. And by how much, I mean how many contracts. And here's the most important thing. What was the delta? Week over week over week over the week, what was the change in long positions? What was the change in short positions? What was the change in long positions? What was the change in short positions? And so now you can see total volume. Is the market net long or net short? And what was the change week over week? And is a new trend developing? What does it mean when you have less bears and more bulls? A very, very bull market. What happens if you have more bulls and more bears? A neutral market. What happens if, you know, and you can just keep playing, keep playing, keep playing, but it's showing you what these are. So for example, I'll tell you one reason why this is interesting. We had, this was I think two years ago, we had a situation where the Euro USD was up for about six weeks. Six weeks, Euro dollar went up, but this COT data showed us Nobody was buying. It was bulls getting out of bullish long positions, which weakened the dollar and forced the euro up. And yet nobody was buying euro. It was everyone getting out of, because they were short the euro to buy the dollar. So now that they're getting out of the dollar long, it get the brokers offset it by saying, okay, you're, you're now short the dollar long euro. It's just offsetting, right? And so euro dollar went up and up and up. Dollar bull volume came down, 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 and that forced the euro up, but nobody was actually buying the euro. They're only exiting their euro dollar short. You see the difference? It was, Euro dollar bears leaving the market, but no bulls actually entered. Which means, let, let's put it all into a real sum. In that situation, okay, in that situation, it was most likely that the market returned to a bear. Because bears were out down here and it drifted, 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 drifted. And then the guys that made all this money down here, because remember they shorted probably six months earlier, they're going to short again and boom, boom, boom. And that's what it was. Thank you for the heads up. Was that helpful, guys? I didn't have charts in front of me. If you want to see it in detail, Come to my webinar on Monday morning. Become a client to tradersway.com and attend my webinar on Monday morning. Tradersway.com, open a demo account, and then Monday morning in your back office, click the button that says webinars. And I'll see you Monday morning, 7.30 a.m. New York time. Ask me again, and I'll show it to you uh, with images as well. We'll actually go through the Commitment to Traders report together. Cool. Is anybody going to take me up on that 57% discount? That's the first discount in, prob like I said, probably two years. Remember the coupon code is NFP157. That's for the all bundles course. You save $922. All bundles. You're like, what's in the all bundles? Everything. 
beginner, intermediate, and fundamentals. So what is this, 31, 51, 65 videos, guys. And these are not two-minute videos. These are like hour-long videos. Most of them, not all of them, but most. Okay, ISM coming out. Hope I didn't miss it. I don't think I did. This is important because non manufacturing index in just a few seconds. Because we're a service industry in the United States. Fifty five point five, fifty five point five below fifty seven expectation for ISM non manufacturing limited index at fifty three point seven and fifty five point nine prior. Lowest reading since August of 2017 for the ISM services. You don't have the actual numbers updated. Lowest level since April 2017. So, it's very, very, very expansionary. They say that's lowest since August 2017, but it's still very expansionary. China is like 50.5. And most people don't believe it. Yes, that's for the video, all the videos, not the live training, Howard. If you want to join the video, uh, the, the swing trading group, that is different. Yes, because it's me live. That's a whole different thing. Most people should take the videos first, then join the swing trading group. Uh, Forex paper, I don't interpret it as bad because it's definitely, definitely, definitely expansionary. Sure, there might be a slowdown or something, but 55 is very expansionary. So like China would be absolutely thrilled to have a 55. Okay, but yeah, it, it is disappointing. Um, okay, but you know, who knows? Okay. So let's take a look at this. New business is actually good. Business activity is actually very good. New orders? Okay, no, it's not a 65, but a 58 is great for new orders. Unemployment? It's a little low, but remember, it's only because companies are having problems finding employees. They probably can't hire them fast enough. This They'd want this to be 60, but it's only 54. That's not a bad number. Inventories have built up a little bit, but that might be seasonally, uh, uh, season, seasonality. And prices are pretty good. I mean, these, this is not bad. Okay. We're pretty blessed to say this is the worst. What is this in Europe? It's probably 45. Okay. Okay. Pretty decent number, man. Pretty decent number. Yes, it's disappointing, but that ain't a bad number. I'd say go back to doing whatever you wanted to be doing before. It's probably going to still work out. So remember, before NFP, we talked about this being supportive. This support creates that support, right? And this is your exit anyways, which is probably your bull, a bearish entry. If you're a bear on gold, You'll probably be short here either later today or on Monday. Can you guys see that? Yeah, Howard. Yeah. Yeah, Howard. Yeah, it's yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
Now, in June and July, I will be doing the swing trading group from Harvard University. I'll probably be in the, the basement of the Science Center because they have soundproof booths. They're like phone bo booths, but soundproof. I'll probably do them from there. I prefer Widener Library, but they, I mean, it's too opulent. So if you don't mind coming to Harvard University with me to do swing trading, of course, you'll you'll be on the Internet <laughs> because I'll be in a phone booth. It's not like I can have an audience of people. But how cool is that, huh? You joining right on, Jorge? Yeah, so... On non-farm payrolls, because of non-farm payrolls, I do my swing trading group Sunday, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern time. So remember, you can join today, and we will plan all of next week out Sunday at 5 p.m. They're recorded, so if you can't trade that live, if that's in the middle of the night for you, that's just too difficult, um, then fine. There's a video, and you can watch the video. Uh, just about three hours, Barry. Where have you been, buddy? Okay. So remember, swing trading, somewhere between 150 and 350 pips is what we look at. Cool. La, la, la. All right, so let's move. Let's do. Oh, well, let's do it. Yeah, three hours. Yeah. I've been streaming for three hours. Yeah, well, you're right. Two, two point five. Suppose I can I can tell you to the exact minute. All right, how long have you been streaming today? Hey Google, how long have I been streaming? Two hours and thirty three minutes. I know, right? Okay, any other questions? Technical analysis or fundamental analysis? All right, so what happened on Wednesday? What did the Fed change? Do you guys want to talk about Split appearing with the FOMC meeting? Steve Leeson on CBC. So the number of Fed speakers will have today. We'll get the Fed's Evans making remarks at 10, 15 Eastern time. Thank you, Trade the News. I turned them off. Yeah, right on. Oh, so you wondered if it was five hours or something. Yeah, it's a long, long presentation. I give you guys a lot of energy. Some people don't like it. Haters going to hate, 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 hate. I O E R. I think is what sure trade needs. Uh, how many people want to talk I O E R? That's what the Federal Open Market Committee changed. If you don't want to talk about F O M C I O E R, then let me know. What do you want to talk about? You're the boss, guys. Yeah, but what does that mean, Howard? Right? Kind of thing. Most people don't know what that means. 
But it, but by the way, it's not, well, it's not really overnight. No, actually, I take it back. I just read it. It's not really overnight. Signal policy changed. No, they actually changed policy. Adam says, why is it so important? Why is inflation so important? Well, the simple answer to that is that it means the purchasing power of your currency is diminished. Why does Coca-Cola produce soda in every country in the world except Venezuela and North Korea? Well, North Korea shuts its borders, so you can't, they won't let Coca-Cola in, and Venezuela can't afford the sugar because their money is worthless. A can of Coke would cost you $10,000. Or if you were in Europe, like how much Coke would you drink if you lived in Paris and a can of Coke was 10,000 euro? Okay, that's called inflation. After World War II, Germany and even Austria paid for their debts by printing money. That's what the central bank did. They just printed their money. It got to the point where you needed a wheelbarrow full of Deutschmarks to pay for a loaf of bread. And if you were rich enough to be in a restaurant, which most people were not, they didn't put prices on the menu because by the time you started dinner and by the time you paid your check, prices probably had doubled. This is a very difficult thing. Okay, this is a very difficult thing to overcome. So that's the that's one of the major reasons we have a central bank. Yeah. Cool. Anyways. Okay. Quite a few people said IOER. Okay, how much did the Fed funds rate change? Zero. But they did change something called the IOER. Okay. And that did change. Uh, it, it went down what, 0.5 or something? Okay. All right. Yeah, I was in that uh, two days ago and then it collapsed on me. So I don't know where it is now, AMFX. Okay. So, anyways, IOER, what is this? Well, Central banks, what they try to do is control the money supply. One of the things they do is they, they require that a bank deposits some of their money into the central bank. And this is called the reserve, reserve requirement ratio. Okay. Have you ever heard this? Maybe from, let's say, the, the People's Bank of China, they'll say China changed their RRR. That's the reserve requirement ratio. Okay. So a central bank, I don't know if you know this, you know, the central bank, the central bank is the bank for, commer for banks. Okay. And each bank takes in deposits from people, let's say, or businesses, and they put their money into a bank. 
But banks have a central bank, and some of this money goes to the central bank, and some of this gets loaned out to somebody else. Okay, this is a very important function because the bank is acting as an intermediary, and this person has excess money. They have too much money. They're like, I want to save my money. And someone else says, I'm a business owner, or uh, I need to borrow money to buy inventory, or I want to buy a house, and I want to take out a mortgage. So this person has too much money. This person needs money. And this wealth is transferred here because eventually what happens is interest is paid here. This person buys a house, but eventually the house goes up in value. This person's richer. This person's richer. And the bank plays a role in moving excess money from people that don't need it, savers, to people in the economy that need, that have opportunity. They don't have enough money, but they have opportunity. And so the banks help money find opportunity, and then everybody gets rich. But to try to be a sort of a middleman, if you will, the, the central bank is trying to control all of this. And so they say, as money comes in, some of it comes here. Okay? And it's required, right? Put in there. But banks very often haven't deployed the capital yet. They've taken in deposits, and they haven't made loans yet. So they're like, well, we're going to look for good loans, but while we wait, we're going to park it in the central bank. These are excess reserves. Okay? There's required reserves. This is the ratio. There's required reserves, and there are excess reserves. Okay? Okay? And this is part of a formula called the money multiplier. It is 1 over R plus E. And of course, you can write it like required reserves plus excess reserves if you want. Okay, I 1 over RR plus ER. And what they did is after the financial crisis, they were forcing banks to basically stay alive, even though they were zombies. And they said, all right, park money at the Fed, including your excess reserves. Why would they want to do this? Well, they wanted to stabilize the banking system, but the banks couldn't make a loan because the markets were frozen. Real estate deals, which created the financial crisis, they were falling by 20, 30, 40, 50%. Right? So like, what are banks supposed to do? Like, what's the value? What's the house worth? We don't know. It's dropping by 10% a month. So there wasn't like good opportunities to take risk, right? So banks had too much cash, which actually the Fed was trying to do, right? To, so uh, to survive stress tests and stuff. So the Fed said, you know what? Park your required reserves at the Fed, but also park your excess reserves at the Fed. And we will pay you money even on your excess reserves. By the way, where did the banks get the excess reserves? The U.S. government. Not the Fed. The U.S. government gave the banks like $500 billion at a time or something like unbelievable. Hey, Bank of America, you have to take this money. Take this $100 billion. We don't want it. Take it anyways! They're like, oh my God, well, what are we going to do with all this money? There's no loans. We can't make any loans. And then the Fed shows up, which is another arm of the government, and said, hey, park them at the Fed. We'll pay you money on top of your free money. So Bank of America is like, hell yeah. I got this 100B for free, 
and now the Fed's going to pay me if I invested into the Fed, I guess. So they gave it back to the Fed. So the government, right, the government printed money, and then it went to the Fed, right? And it was this circle. So now the government's just a different part of the government, and the banks are in there just making money. Boom, 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 boom. So the Fed said, oh, no, 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 no. We got to start getting rid of this. We got to get rid of this nonsense eventually. There's no reason to pay banks to park the free money at the Fed. We actually want them to deploy the capital into the market. Okay, you see that? Instead of the money going to the Fed, they want to entice bank managers. See, it's not a law. Like, it's required to put money at the Fed. But these excess reserves, that's up to the bank. They can do whatever they want with it. You can loan it. Keep some cash on hand in case depositors want to withdraw, right? So remember, you got to have some cash. Like if you showed up to the bank, you're like, I want $200. They got to give you $200. It's on demand. It's a liability to the bank, so they have to have some. They can buy bonds, specific types of bonds with, with uh, certain risk profiles and maturities and such, right? Or they park it, their excess reserves at the Fed, and they earn money. Well, if they were earning 1.5% risk-free, why would you buy a bond worth 2% with risk? You're like, you know what, I'll just leave it at the Fed. So what they're trying to do is say, no, 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 no. We need to reduce this and basically get rid of it. So that you have no incentive, Mr. or Mrs. Bank Manager, to leave it at the Fed. You have incentives to buy bonds, to loan it out, or keep it in your drawers. Okay? But David, it, it worked. Okay? Okay? Now, the government screwed it up, not the Fed. The, what the government did was absolutely retarded. Here's a billion dollars. We're not going to tell you what to do with it. There's going to be no tracking, no follow-up, no nothing. So remember Thane, I think his name was? He's like, oh, I'll build a nice office and buy a jet. <laughs> and they're like, you can't do that. And he's like, why? You just forced the billion dollars into my down my throat. I didn't want it. I didn't need it. I didn't ask for it. I, in fact, said no, and you told me I had to take it, so I took it, but you didn't tell me what to do with it, so I bought a jet. They're like, that's bad. No, you're bad. What the U.S. government did was horrific. What the Fed did, did was great, but you know what was even better? It was the ECB. Okay. Okay. Greece, remember Greece and all the pigs? Remember that? They were dying. They were getting slaughtered. It was the end of the Euro. The European economy was really, really really close to death. Greece needed cash. They needed cash. So they said, hey, investors, give us cash and we'll give you 5%. Interest rates in the United States were zero. Is that a good deal? People said, no way, no way. Greece is literally dead. 
Nails are already in the coffin. We've already put the coffin in the ground. This deal is dead. So Greece says, oh my God, we'll pay you 8%. Interest rates around the world were zero. Greece said, we'll pay you 8%. Investors laughed. No way, Greece. You are cho you already choked on your blood. You're already dead. We'll pay you 10%. Please give us cash. No. We'll pay you 12%. Please give us cash. No way. We'll pay you 15%. The world is at zero. We'll pay you 50%. We're a member of the European Union for crying out loud. No way. You are dead, 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 dead. We will not pay you any pennies. Yet dollars, like forget it. You're dead, Greece. There's no way we're going to pay. We'll pay you 20%. We're a member of the European Union. We're part of the European Central Bank. We're like, we're like, no way, dude. Your economy is dead. You're going to default. You're going back to the drachma. No way. We'll pay you 22%. Please give us money. And Draghi's like, how are we going to bail these guys out? The ECB, by the way, didn't have enough money. They didn't have enough money. So Draghi's thinking about it, thinking about it. And everyone's like, hey, are you going to guarantee Greece, ECB? If Greece defaults, are you going to bail us out? Are you going to bail Greece out? Remember all of that? And the ECB is like, dude, we don't have that kind of money. So where did all this money come from? Like hedge fund managers and stuff like they would love to take the 22%. Like, oh my God, right? But not when there was almost 100% chance that you're not going to get paid back, right? Like, you you don't care about the 22% return if you're absolutely certain they're not going to pay you back. So anyways, one day, Draghi says in a press conference, and it's brilliant, by the way. Somebody said, well, if the pigs go down, that's the end of the euro. Draghi said, I will do whatever it takes to protect the euro. And what he did was it was a wink, wink, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Hey, hedge fund managers of the world, I can't actually say it. I can't actually promise it because it's a moral hazard. Let's be honest. Nobody actually knows. But I'll tell you what, hedge fund managers of the world. When I say I'll protect the euro no matter what it takes, I'm implying a guarantee. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to put it in writing, but I'm going to imply it. So take your 22%, give it, give your money to Greece. Hedge fund managers, you bail out Greece. You have the money. The ECB doesn't have the money. Bonds in the United States pay zero. 22% is redonkulous for a European country and for Spain and for Italy, right? Portugal, pick these yields up, hedge fund managers of the world, and I will, wink, wink, nudge, 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 guarantee it. One year later, these are like zero again. There was so much money flowing to these countries, Portugal, Ireland, Italy, Greece, Spain. Yields went down, yields went down, yields went down, yields went down. And one year later, they were rolling over, and you had to decide. Your old bond paid you 22%. Do you want to buy another one at 3? It wasn't zero, but it was low. Do you want to buy another one at 3 or at 2? Hey? You used to be at 22%. Do you want to roll your money over? 
Okay? So at this time, Europe was on the precipice of collapse. And the euro was strong. And then once we got this going, the euro, right? The euro got strong because everyone was buying euro to lend euros to Greece to collect the 22%. And then when the rollover occurred, all that money flowed out of Greece because nobody wanted it at 2%, the euro, the euro weakened, okay? And Greece was saved, Italy was saved, Ireland was saved, Spain was saved, Portugal, Portugal was saved, and it cost the ECB zero euros. Well played. So is it time? It is time. Well, thank you, FX Street, for hosting us. Thank you, moderator, for moderating like no moderator has ever moderated before. Moderating greatness. Thank you very much. Thank you for all your questions and participation, guys, and the loyalty and respect you showed me. Please visit tradersway.com, open a demo account so that you can install all my chart templates for free, charts.fxbootcamp.com. On Monday, I'm going to go through the commitment of the traders report with actual charts so you can see them. So when you open up your demo account in the back office, there's a button that says live webinars. See you Monday morning. If you want to take the swing trading course or join the group, you can join the group. If you want to take all the videos, what was it? It was like 56 videos or something. 57% off today, only today, not next week, not till Monday. No, I think it's actually, you have 24 hours. So you have till tomorrow morning. The coupon code is NFP157. $922 discount. I think you end up paying 700 bucks for like 70 hours of videos. That ain't bad. If you give me a chance, I'll make you a better trader. Okay? Any last questions? You can have my chart templates for free. Open account to Trader's Way. You can come to my Monday webinar for free. Open account to Trader's Way. Right? Chart templates, charts.fxbootcamp.com. Training videos, fxbootcamp.com. 57% discount is, I guess I can just draw it. NFP157. All course bundle that's every video save $922 today first discount in probably two years is it 65 videos yeah Is there anything more? Well, I think it's just, it's just the first month is 999, and then after that it's 99. Yeah. We're meeting Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern time, and then typically we meet Friday. Uh, RC, it's about an hour, depending on questions. Sometimes it's an hour and a half. I typically stay till I'm done. I'm like, what are you planning? How do you need help? So the swing trading group, I don't, like, it's not education. It's us working. It's our job. We do our job. You have to finish the course first so you know what the heck you're doing. Because I'm not there to, like, baby you and say, oh, well, this is a little 5A cross and this is, blah, blah, blah. no, no, we're doing our job. Okay? It's work. So you got to go through the education first, but that's why I recorded it. And that's only 
I think there's like 30 hours worth of videos. 30 hours. Okay. Yeah, Art, Ron, but I, I think the way it works is it charges you the, the first month at the same time. So it ends up, I think your first month is 999, and then after that it's 99, but I might be wrong. Okay. So how much is it actually? I think it ends up being, uh, I think it's 700 bucks or something. What I did is I looked at, this is NFP 57, so I gave you a 57% discount. So I think I think it ends up being about seven hundred bucks. You're saving nine hundred and twenty-two, which is fifty-seven percent. Okay. Oh, thanks, DJ. You may not see another discount for two years. I don't know. I've been doing this for thirteen years at FX Street. This is probably the first time in two years. So it's not like this happens often. Okay. Every video we've ever done. You need to know price action. There's price action. Swing trading, swing trading. Scalping, scalping. Spot trading, spot trading. Fundamentals. If you don't know how to manage the balance sheet of a commercial of a commercial uh, bank, you need to take the fundamentals course. I wrote a paper yesterday about how asymmetric information creates a moral hazard. If you don't understand any of that, you need to take the course. If today, if I, if my explanation of the IOER was an eye opener for you, you need to take the course. If you didn't know that, you must take the fundamentals course. That's included in the bundle. If you're like, IOER, what is that? You are not on the clue train. You're not a professional yet. If you didn't know that immediately. More importantly, how does that impact the economy? What is the strategy from the Fed? Why would they do it? How will it impact how will this change currency valuations in the short run and long run? You don't know any of that? Oh my God, you need to take the course. This is your call to action. Time to get serious. Any other questions? If not, I got to go. I got homework to do. X2 is equal to R, 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 uh, I equals 1 K over E1 minus O1 squared over E1. One. Okay. That's what I'm working on. Yeah, hang on, 4Xer. Hang on, right? <laughs> All right. That's it. Everyone's good. I love you, babe, but I got to jump. It was real. Again, thank you to FX Street. Right? Let's... Let's do a big, uh, oh, I got to turn this off. Right? Let's do a big round of applause. <laughs> Epic straight. Epic straight. Woo! <laughs> See? A big round of applause. Thank you, Epic Street. You're good people. Thank you, moderator. You're good people. Thank you to you guys, Forex traders. It's a tough gig, but you're good people. If you got your head screwed on straight and you're trying to see the matrix and you're not being fooled by the illusions, you might make it. 
if you got enough here, if you got enough here, and you have a ridiculous, sickening work ethic on the long run, not the short one. I worked really hard for three days and I'm not rich. You're going to work really, really hard for the next 30 years. But I think you're going to be happy. I can teach you how to be happy. And it's not money. Forex makes you good money. Forex is intellectually challenging. I will teach you how to reach your full potential. And that will feel that accomplishment and gratitude will lead to your happiness and the happiness to the people around you. Trust me on that. Okay? Trust me on that. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May our profits be above average. I'll see you Monday morning. If you open up a Trader's Way account, either live or demo, I will see you Monday morning. Webinar is at 7.30. Otherwise, I will see you uh, next month. Ne next month is what, June? June something? You know, I'll, be, I'll be here. I'll be in my office, and then I'll be on my way to uh, Cambridge again for year three of grad school. So anyways, see ya.